Advent of Code 2023, Day 23. A long walk. The elves resume water filtering operations. Clean water starts flowing over the edge of Island Island. They offer to help you go over the edge of Island Island too. Just hold on tight to one of the one end of this impossibly long rope, and they'll lower you down a safe distance from the massive waterfall you just created. As you finally reach Snow Island, you see that the water isn't really reaching the ground. It's being absorbed by the air itself. It looks like you'll finally have a little downtime while the moisture builds up to snow producing levels. Snow Island is pretty scenic even without any snow. Why not take a walk? There's a map of nearby hiking trails, your puzzle input, that indicates paths, forests, and steep slopes. Oh, steep slopes. I see slopes. I see slopes everywhere. Okay, you're currently on the single path tile in the top row. Your goal is to reach the single path tile in the bottom row. I see it. Because of all the mist from the waterfall, the slopes are probably quite icy. If you step onto a slope tile, your next step must be downhill in the direction the arrow is pointing. To make sure you have the most scenic hike possible, never step onto the same tile twice. Okay. What's the longest hike you can take? Oh, all right. In the example above, the longest hike you can take is marked with an O, and your starting position marked with an S. All right, so this is the longest hike you can take. It's interesting. I'm just looking here that this this chunk of uh, maze is not filled in. It doesn't have any dead ends. I don't know if that's significant. The site contains 94 steps. The other possible hikes you could have taken were 90, 86, 82, 82, and 74 steps long. Find the longest hike you can take through the hiking trails listed on your map. How many steps long is the longest hike? All right, let's get the puzzle input. Oh, okay, it's not too bad. Let's take a look at it in the browser just to see what it looks like. All right. I'm um, looking for slopes. I see some slopes here. Some slopes over here. Some slopes here and okay, this is a four-way sloper. All right. Um, let's see. So because this is a maze, we're going to walk on I think I'm going to do the opposite of my normal um hash map. Uh, let's flip these back and put day 23 here. Oops, that's not day 23. That is. There we go. Um, and let's jump to the file we just created. Nope. 23, 23. Bacon. Run. All right, that's that. It's 23 squared day, yeah. We get two more years of having a square day, and then we have to wait 75 more years before we can um, have a not of have another square day in, in 2101, day one. Uh, all right. Um, yeah, so I think because that way, I think it'll make running the maze a lot easier. We can just say if a tile exists in that direction, then go that way. And I can see there's, there's going to be a bunch of just running to the next intersection and then deciding which way to go. Um, you're going to have to keep track of, so the slopes, like you could run. Hmm. I'm just looking to see if there's any, you know, if you're running up this way and then you, you hit this tile, um, you can't go that way anymore. It's it's essentially a dead end, but he deliberately eliminated dead ends. Are these slopes only on the intersections? Yeah. That can't be a coincidence. Let me look here. Search for greater than. Are these? Okay. That makes, the, I think it makes the problem space a lot simpler. 
There's no less than's. Maybe I have to type it. No less than's. How about ups? No ups. How about downs? There's downs. So there's only greater than, oops, greater than's or downs. Scoop says next year we'll just move Christmas to the 26th. Yeah. Or it could be a Boxing Day advent calendar. Okay, so this is interesting. The slopes don't go all the directions. The slopes only care about down and to the right. <laughs> okay. At least for my puzzle input. I can't but it can't be a coincidence. Let's see. This this should be let's find all the V's here. Yeah, I'm using the dark plugin thing, but it's very faint. You can see the, let's see if we can do a less than. Oops, nope. I hit print screen, which is right above my backspace key. So there's no less than, there's one less than there. It says it in here, but that's it. Um, so, and then ups, there's one there and that's it. All right, so I think that that might simplify the problem space. Um, we can do is just use, BFS and just keep going until we find the maximum. What's part two going to be? Part two is going to be you exit here and then you enter the next maze and you keep going. Now that doesn't make sense. All right. So let's create a tile, which is going to have spaces and it's going to have um, slope with a direction. And the direct oops and the direction is going to be down or to the right that makes things a little easier um yeah that's that's all we need right and now we can parse the input uh let's grab the test data as one does You see lib read lines uh, test input and up here we're going to have a maze which is just going to be a hash map uh, from row call mapping it to a tile and then we'll have the width and the height Um, okay. So for this, okay, well, let's first set the height is equal to lines, line self width equals lines zero len for row in lines. No, yeah, row line in lines enumerate or call character in line chars enumerate match ch oh um there we go match ch uh if it is a hash sign we're going to ignore it if it's a dot we're going to say self maze insert row call tile space. Um, if it is a greater than, we'll say self maze insert row call tile slope direction right. <clears throat> And then down, self maze, insert row call, tile, slope, direction. Good monk, hello. Panic. And my voice is starting to go. That's not good. 
<clears throat> Let me take a quick sip. <clears throat> All right, let's see if that gets us a maze. Oh, right, I have to get um, hash map in there. And this has to be lines iter enumerate. I keep forgetting that. All right. So we got the maze parsed. Um, we do need to find the starting location and the ending location. Um, let me take a quick look here. Because this one's at zero, 01, and so is this. And this one's at the bottom right, and so is this. So it might it might be the same for everybody, but I'll put them in here anyway. Start I64, I64. They're not hard to find. Um, four, call in zero dot dot self width. If, let's say, yeah, if self maze get uh, contains row zero on call, then self start is equal to zero call. Um, else, if self maze can Oh, contains key. Right. Um, self height minus one call, and self end is equal to self height minus one call. There we go. And that should give us the start um, start and end points. Mr. Lockin says, finally caught a live one. Oh, good. Glad you're here. Lynn, um, start and end. These are the directions we need to go. Self start, self end. One one to twenty two twenty one. Okay, good. So I think we can just do BFS. Um, we just need to do because we're doing the longest instead of shortest. We have to do the whole thing, um, and we just need to make sure that we don't go backwards. I think every decision point, every intersection, is there any? Oh yeah, so if we come up this way, we mustn't go up that way. Got it. Yeah, okay. So we do need to check to see which direction the slope is going. So if we, we just walk our way through the maze, is it, it can't be that simple, right? Um, let mutt stack equals vec bang self start zero, right? We're just gonna do a BFS while let some position and distance equals stack pop. Um, const ders. I sixty four sixty four semicolon four equals and then we'll do um, up down left and right. How's that? And we can say uh, for dir in dir. Um, yeah, that's right. Oh, we want to we want to keep track of which direction we're going so we don't go backwards. We're going to go start going down in ders. If dir, um, dir dot zero, no, no, negative dir dot zero, comma, negative dir dot one is equal to current direction. So let's call this current position as well, just to be consistent. Curder, right? If we're looking backwards the way we came, let's just continue. Keep going. Otherwise, what we can do is just look around us. And if it's a space or a slope, oh, if it's space, we can just go. If it's a slope, we have to make sure we're not going against the slope. OK, so match um, self maze get. Um, oh, no, the next pause. Let next pause is equal to. Per pause zero plus dir zero, 
square root of pause 1 plus zero one. 1. Next pause. And we're going to match. Can we fill in the match arms? Ah, it did this thing. Okay. Um, it shouldn't be in. Oh. We can say if let sum tile equal this. And then we can match on the tile. There. Oh, but it didn't fill in the slope. Okay. So if it's a space, we can just go that way, right? We can just say stack push, uh, new pause, current direction, and dist plus one. Right? Um, if it's a slope, um, slope. Um, we want to make sure we're not going to, we're not walking against the slope. Um, I'm going to change this just to make it easier for me. We're going to blow away this whole direction thing and we'll just put the direction right in here. We have memory, right? We have Ram. Uh, let's change this to, uh, we're going to the right. So it's zero one. And this is one zero. Right? And now we can compare the slope directly. We can say if we're going to go against the slope. Oh, no, if it's a slope, we could just compare and see if we're going in that slope's direction. I, I think that might be easier. If slope is equal to dir, then we can say stack push, new pause, or oh, next pause. That's why this one's gray. There we go. Dir and dis plus one. All right, and what's our ending condition? We have to wait until we've done the whole thing and then save the maximum. So we'll say that. And we'll say if cur pause is equal to self end, then we've reached our end state at distance dist. So we could say max dist is equal to max dist max dist. <laughs> continue. I like that. All right, and it continues so that we go, we try the next path. Uh, this is it's not going to be fast because it's you know BFS, but whatever. And then we just have to dump out max dist. Right? Oh, uh, consider dereferencing. I've considered dereferencing and I agree with dereferencing. 94. Uh, oh, that was a test input. 94, look at that. Not bad. And it took less than a millisecond. So I'm happy. Relatively easy part one. Um, let me get rid of the print. I don't need to know that. Um, and then switch over to the real input. Uh, input 2023, 20, 23. 23 squared. 27, oh, it's, it took a tenth of a second. Um, 2070. Because I, I basically did a, a, a flood fill, right? That's the right answer. Huzzah. All right, let's go with Clippy. Clippy's happy. Get status. Get add source. Get commit. Dash M. 2023. Day 23. Part 1. I had to think for a second. All right, let's see part two is. Continue to part two. As you reach the trailhead, you realize that the ground isn't as slippery as you expected. You'll have no problem climbing up the steep slopes. Uh -huh. Now treat all slopes as if they were normal paths. You still want to make sure you have the most scenic height possible, so continue to ensure that you never step on the same tile twice. What is the longest hike you can take? Ooh, interesting. Um, my immediate thought here is that we don't care about all the intermediate steps. If we can save the distance to them, um, we can just treat these as nodes on a, or vertices on a, in a graph space, right? 
although we, I, this does loop, right? Because now this tile, we ignore the fact that it's saying go to the right. Um, so we could end up with making a loop, right? You can end up looping around and around. So I'm glad that was in the example. Otherwise, I wouldn't have thought of that. Um, so we can consider every intersection of vertex and the edges will be how many steps it took to get from one vertex to the next. Does that sound like a reasonable approach? And then we could just do BFS again, or maybe something smarter to get an answer that'll give us, or give us a, the longest path. Again, because it's longest path, we have to do the whole thing. Um, what we could do, and I, I don't think this is cheating, but it might be considered a little bit cheating. Um, as we process part one, we can save all the intersections. Let's switch back to the test input before I blow up my, um, before I blow up my uh, um, output here. Because I'm going to dump out all the intersections. Let's see if we can find them. Uh, we had hit an intersection whenever we're next to a slope. No, not when we're next to a slope. When we're next to more than one slope. Okay, let's let's try to keep track of that. Let my slope count equals zero. If we see a slope, slope count plus equals one. And then I can print out uh, here if slope count is greater than three, I'll just print out the row call that we're on, right? Um, which is Kerpos. Intersection at Kerpos. Right? Mr. X says, Part three is you can go anywhere at most twice. Now you can explore those dead ends. What's the longest hike? <laughs> All right. Let me do part two first before I do part three. Um, and I'm disappointed because I didn't see any output for part two. I mean, for the slope count. What did I do wrong? Oh, greater than three. It should be greater than one. There we go. Okay, so now we have some intersections. So we can actually store those as we're finding them. Uh, these will be the vertices. Um, and I'm seeing multiple of the same. So let's throw in a hash set. Because I'm lazy. And hash set answers all of my problems. OK. So we can now. Instead of printing it out, we can just insert it into the vertices. Like that. Right. And now in part two, we can just print those out. Print lin, and most, we should see all of them. I don't know why the code completion doesn't work while you're inside a print line. Um, yeah, OK, this seems like a reasonable list of vertices. Um, let's see if it's close. We have 1313. Actually, you know what? I'll just pull it up in my editor. Of course, everything is off by 1. Right, this is at 14.6. So is there a 13.5? There is. OK. And then 13, 13, which should be a 14, 14. Yep. Uh, let's make sure we get the last one as well. We see all of them. This is 2020, so there's a, there's a 19, 19 right there. Okay. All right. I think I think we're on the right track. Now the question is, we want to compute the distance to each vertex or every vertex pair. No, 
not every vertex, but every vertex you, you can reach from one vertex to the next, right? We don't want to find the distance from here to here, right? We want to find a distance from this guy to this guy and from this guy to this guy, and that'll give us our edges. Mr. Luckin says, same approach I took, but my code needs some optimization. It takes one second on my laptop. Okay. Um, I can probably guarantee that I'm going to write even slower code. And this is a Mac M2, Mac Studio M2 Max uh, that I use for work. So, yes. Um, okay, let's let's see if we can calculate the distances between every edge. Um, actually, let me slip back here. This, I mean, this is the edge distance between every vertex. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So that one's fifteen. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. All right, that one's also 22. All right, so we should, once we get these values, we should be able to see, let me write these down, uh, test input, um, start to first is 15, uh, first to lower one is 22, and the first to the right or one <laughs> is 22. All right, so let's see if we can at least find these things. So what we'll do is we'll we'll start like we do. Let mut stack equals vec bang. We have a starting location, a distance of zero, semicolon, while let some oh yeah we need to we still need to walk the whole maze all right that's going to slow me down um because i need to walk the whole maze to calculate the distances because we did not get the distances in part one and even if we did in part one it wouldn't be all of the distances right like here if you're coming down this way and then you get to this point, you're not going to find the distance from this intersection to the, up to this intersection. Um, well, I mean, maybe you do. Maybe you can. If you just insert both of them. Okay, okay. Let's see. Let me change this from a hash set of this, this, this to a hash set of this, this plus a distance. A row call dist. And then here we have a vertex. Oh, we, we have to do is remember. Yeah, that's not really part of part one though. We'd have to remember where we started the intersection, right? So we're gonna to have to say this is our origin. Wizard says distance from where. Yeah, that yeah, I okay. I think you you caught my my mistake right away. Um because we wanna say, okay, we wanna know that the edge from here to here is twenty-two. We don't want to calculate it from the beginning. Um so we would have to extend part one to get more information which we, we could do um so we can say self start zero right so this uh tuple i should make it a struct now right um the tuple is going to be the last intersection um overall distance to last intersection start uh current position current direction current distance 
Okay, so that's what's going to be in here. So then we're going to say um, last pause and last dist here. Okay. And then when we push on a space, we're going to just copy those. If we hit an intersection, Oh dear, how do we do this? Because if we're on the front end of the slope, right? If we're here and we're looking at this one, we're not at a vertex yet. It's only when we're on a vertex that we actually want to change. Okay. Oops. Um, let next stack equals vec new and we'll say next stack here and next stack here and this just has these guys and then what we'll do is we'll loop over the next stack right we can just say for n in next stack oh oh i gotta put it outside Right, 28 there, and then um, stack push. And then we're gonna say if the slope count, yeah. So we can say, let origin equals last pause, let mut, O dist equals last dist, and then we can change these here. Origin is equal to cur pause, and O dist is equal to zero again, right? Because that's all we care. Oh, no, 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 we're going to have the absolute distance here. So we need to save the current distance. And now here, we're going to push these guys on. Origin, O dist, on n.0, n.1, n.2. Okay. We should still have the same information, but now the vertices should also be able to get um, the distance, which is going to be last dist minus dist. Maybe? Mohad, hello. Oh, I didn't make it mutable. Okay. If you insist. Oh, I got these backwards. Um, distance is higher than last dist. I just saw the negatives. All right. Um, I have no idea. Oh, I and I don't have the origin in here, do I? That should be that should be one of the entries um, in our vertices. I was just looking for it. Uh, self vertices push oh insert uh, start self start zero there we go mohad says what are you trying to do for part two um what i'm trying to do is just create a bunch of or look for all the intersections which i've been able to do that's what's on the left here in the left window and get the edges between each and consider them a vertex of a graph, and then the edges are going to be distance from each location. And then just walk the graph um, to solve the, the puzzle. I think. Oh, and Mizzard says the goal, too. You're right. Um, we'll need that here, then, right? Self vertices insert self end um, last. No, dist minus last dist. But there's more than one way to get there. Oh, there's more than one way to get there. So we can't just store it. We have to go back to a hash map and then say hash and stick these in a hash set. I64, I64. 
a hash set of um, the origin point and the distance from the origin to where we are. So this is the dust, this is the source. I mean, this, this could just be a vector at this point, right? You just push those on. Okay, well, well let's let's see what happens. Um, and now it's not insert. Oh, it is insert, but it's insert self start and then self start zero. And then insert self end, um, vec bang, last pause, comma. Right? And then down here, the current position, and then this will be yeah, last pause. Oh, I don't want to insert the vector. I want to okay. I want to <laughs> um I want to entry entry the entry um API. Entry self start um, and this is uh, or default push this that's what I want to do entry um, or default push yep it's getting messier and messier. And then we do the same thing here, or default, push this. Uh, entry. Okay, so this is saying from 1121 to, there's a distance of 30 to 311, a distance to 18 to 1313. Oh, okay, maybe I did want that a hash set, okay. Oh, this is not good. Oh, right. I never did the, the reverse direction. I never did the reverse direction. But let's see. Um, 5, 3 has 15, right? And that was one of the... I didn't write down the, with the, the locations of them. Um, 5, 3 was 15. This is 6, 4. Yeah, so 5, 3 has 15. I think we're on the right track, right? But 5, 3 also needs the reverse it needs the forward direction. All I'm doing is saving. So at, let's see, at, where is this? 412. So 311 should have a, a pointer to 53. And it does. And it's 22. Perfect. And what was the other one? This guy down here is also 22. So 13.5. Where's 13.5? Here it is. And it also has 22. Okay. So I just need the other direction for the edge too, right? So self vertices. Oh, right. And I wanted to make it a hash map, a hash set, because we have dupes. We have dupes everywhere. So V hash set. There we go. Vertices insert. Vertices. Insert. Okay, I already got that one. All right, that should simplify. Let's let's print them out so I can read them. Uh, for v in self vertices. There. All right. So from zero one. Oh, I still don't. I didn't do the back direction for that. Oh, they're not there. Oh, I, I never did it. I just switched it over to a hash map and then I never did the, oh, I'm going too fast. That's my problem. So this is last pause and cur pause, right? So this is the, the, the back direction, how we got here. And then how we get back. There we go. 
Um, although I don't like this. I shouldn't have that in there. You shouldn't have a link from yourself to there. So let me remove that. And then 1919 should, oh. Yeah, I guess it's okay to have the, this is the, this is the end. And I was just looking to see if 1919 was listed here and it's not in here. So we do need to reverse it. Um, so this is last pause. Right. And this is self end. I think that's the way to do it. Yeah, so zero one can go there. 1919 can now hit the end in five. Does that make sense? Let's see if that's correct. So 2020, so one, two, three, four, five. Perfect. Okay. Um, I think we're getting really close now to being able to just walk the vertices. Um, so we're gonna start at our starting point. We don't need to print them anymore. Um, let stat mut stack is equal to vec bang self start zero. We still need to calculate the maximum distance uh, while let some cur pause and dist is equal to stack pop. What do we do? We can look in the vertices for the current position and oh we don't we definitely don't want to do a loop right like 1121 points to 1919 1919 points back to 1121 so we're going to have to keep track of which actually even called it out right never step on the same tile twice he even called it out um we do need to keep track of where we've been for any particular given trail we're on, <laughs> right? Because we want to be able to, we want to be able to go, you know, go this way and then try this direction, but we also want to go and try this direction. And we don't want to eliminate this position if we if we happen to come around that way. We don't want to eliminate that position from an alternate approach. So we can't just have a global visited. We have to have a per step visited. Okay. So visited. And this will just be a hash set new. And that'll keep track of what where we visited in this particular path that we were on. Um, and we can say that if not visited, insert cur pause, continue. Do I have to, cannot mutate, can I, can I just throw a mute in here? Will that work? It does, look at that. Um, so if you visited it, then it's no good. Um, what if we're at the end? If, oh, we want to do that before we check visited, right? Self, actually it doesn't, it shouldn't matter, right? Because we're only going to visit for any given path, we'll only visit the end once. But I'll, I'll put it first here. End is equal to cur pause. Then we're going to save the maximum distance. Max dist equals max dist dot max dist continue right we're done with this this once we reach the end we don't care anymore we visited the spot already we don't want to revisit it and now we can loop over all of the vertices in our hash map right we can we're at current position so let's look at all of the everything in the hash set sorry hash set that we haven't visited yet and we'll throw that on the stack along with the visited a copy of the visited we have to clone it. Okay, for um, neighbors 
in self visited and uh, vertices get curve pause um, and then we just say self stack no just stack <laughs> stack push um, the neighbors contain we can we can destructure it here next pause next dist right um it doesn't like that why not what did, what does this return oh that's not it unknown why if i take this out what do we get we get the hash set oh that's the the whole hash set we need to iterate over it can i say unwrap iter okay and now i can say next pause next dist right there we go okay um but i don't like this it should it should unwrap right we're not going to ever visit a position on the map that doesn't have a vertex so we should be good we should be good um yeah all we need to do is push it on the stack stack push uh next pause uh next dist plus the current dist and then um oh we need to clone visit it let v equals visited clone v um yeah is that it and then we just over here we just say max dist see how slow it is uh it doesn't like that okay 154 is that the answer where's the answer where oh here it is 154 okay good mod says unwrap is better since it shouldn't exist it should exist and you want it to crash if it doesn't wizard says get or default oh you mean for this thing yeah i but but yeah like um mod said we'll need um we'll need to die if i messed up my other vertices okay let's try it on the real stuff uh input 2023 23 text it's not fast definitely not in the um <laughs> five millisecond range hopefully i don't have an infinite loop in here it worked on the test input isn't that the uh the rallying cry of advent of coders everywhere cargo run release wow even in release mode it's slow well i'm sad you know scoop says it worked on the test one. yeah that's the oh we got an answer it took 13 and a half seconds but we got an answer. I've got a feeling if I did like Dijkstra, there we go. That's the right answer. Okay. I'm happy. I'm going to keep this because this is a, a weekend. I'm not supposed to stream on weekends. Um, but we can, we can look at if, you know, after the event is over, we can look at speeding it up um, using Dijkstra. A star, I bet would have a, a better thing. Mizzard says my first version without pass compression took six minutes. Wow. Monk says, yay, congratulations. Mod says, you did 21? Oh, yeah, I finished 21 this, at, at the beginning of the stream. Um, I used this to figure out uh, how to do uh, day 21. 